that list you wanted a new insurance policy sold last week, Mr. Barnstead? Mm. One? Is that all the insurance policies Mr. Briggs has sold in a week? One? Yes, sir. Uh, Miss Auckland. Auckland? Isn't that the woman yes, who... Yes, sir. Inform Mr. Briggs. I'd like to see him immediately. That'll be all, Miss Fallon. Yes, Mr. Barnsdale. And Miss Fallon. Yes, Mr. Barnsdale. May I remind you that this is a respectable office and not the Follies Bergere? Yes, Mr. Barnsdale. I believe the old barnmore wants to see me, Miss Fallon. Yes, Mr. Briggs, Mr. Barnsdale does want to see you. You, uh, you don't happen to know what about, do you? Your sales record. Oh. Oh. Uh, what sort of mood's he in? He complained about my... Oh. <clears throat> You, uh, you wanted to see me, sir? I wouldn't have sent for you if I didn't, Mr. Briggs. I've been looking at your sales report. What there is of it. Oh, yes, sir. And I note with extreme displeasure, I may say, that in the last ten business days you have sold only one insurance policy. Uh, yes, sir, but I think I can explain... An accident sir. policy to a woman who... A good, sound, reliable woman, sir, full of moral fibre. Ah, I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Briggs. That takes us to the very heart of the problem. We engaged your services as an insurance salesman six months ago because you had just been married. And because we believed, in the words of our illustrious founder Ebenezer Puritan, that marriage maketh responsibility, and responsibility maketh the man. Indeed it does, sir. It does, sir. But, our founder added sagaciously, if marriage maketh not the man, then look to one or the other for a flaw. My marriage is quite happy, sir, I assure you. Then there's only one other direction in which we can look. Perhaps we misjudged your moral fibre. Perhaps that is why your sales record is so poor. Perhaps your fibre is frayed. There's nothing wrong with my fibre, sir. I've just had a run of bad luck in selling, that's all. Given time... As our founder observed, time is the hard-earned wage of the upright and the diligent. Yes, sir. To lapse into the vernacular, I must ask you to pull your socks up. Or you may find that Puritan insurance will be unable to pull them up for you much longer. Yes, sir. That is all, Mr. Briggs. One moment. A word of advice. When you go home tonight, I trust you will mull over the wise words of Ebenezer Puritan, which he said as he lay dying. Out of the humble building blocks of moral rectitude and unimpeachable character, I have erected an edifice of sound insurance. I am now ready to go to heaven. Are you, sir? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. <coughs> <coughs> Well? I'm still hanging on by a moral fibre. You had the as he lay dying speech. And how? The only thing is I looked up old Ebenezer Puritan in the history books. He didn't say anything when he died. He couldn't. He was shot dead by an outraged husband in a lady's boudoir. Oh, Mr. Briggs. Puritan, huh? Oh, good evening, Miss Hawkins. Mr. Briggs, yes? I still haven't heard anything from your company about those accident claims that I made. Oh, I've got the whole staff working on it, Miss Hawkins. You'll be hearing soon. Oh, oh, Mr. Briggs. Yes? I do wish you'd do something about your electric razor in the morning. It disturbs my sleep. I'll uh, put a silencer on it, Miss Auckland. Hello, darling. Hello, dear. Mm. How'd it go today? It didn't. There doesn't seem to be anybody in London who wants to insure their life or their health. Oh, never mind. I still think you're the very best insurance salesman in the whole world. Yeah, I wish you'd convince old Barnsdale about that. Oh, not another old Barnsdale lecture. Uh-huh. Poor darling, was it very bad? Oh, yes, it was. Spelled out in large, illuminated letters. Sell or be damned. Does that mean you might lose your job? Yes, it does. Not that that means very much, of course, working on commission as I do. You know what the trouble with me is? I'm not unscrupulous enough. The other fellas in the office, huh, they'd do anything for a sale. They'd convince an Eskimo he needed protection against a heat rash. Well, not me, oh no. I've got my damned conscience. Oh, I wouldn't have you any other way. Yeah. Oh, no, darling, I'm being serious. Do you know why I haven't sold any policies lately? Because I wouldn't make use of my friends, that's why. Oh, you sold a policy to Miss Auckland? Yeah, she's nobody's friend. I tell you, if I'm going to keep my job and make money for us, I've got to sell to anybody. Well, who are you going to ask? Well, you remember me mentioning a fellow by the name of Drew Tierney? No. Yes, you do, darling. He saved my life in Korea. Uh -huh. He saved my life. I as well go on. Yeah. Well, anyway, he's been made manager of Worldwide Motors Limited. What's that? Well, it's a big car rental firm with a big side sale of second-hand cars. And Drew's London manager. You think he might be interested in life insurance? No, not life insurance, darling. 
car insurance. I mean, if every car they sell has to be insured, then why not buy Purit? Well, why not indeed? I mean, all Drew has to do is mention our name, and then... Oh, Tom, if you could pull that off, you'd bore Mr. Barnsdale right onto his, his moral fibre. Yes, oh, yes, I would. <laughs> That's just the sort of spectacular sale that would impress old Barnsdale. I'm going to see old Drew first thing in the morning. Good idea. I didn't think of it before. Don't know how you manage it, darling. Darling, not if I can help it. What? Oh, that is to anyone except you. When I'm ready to settle down. Right now, I need a wife. Uncle Charles arrives the day after tomorrow. And if I don't present him with a wife, well, I'm out of work. He'll disinherit me. Why can't I meet Uncle Charles as your wife? <laughs> well, I've told you, darling, he's insisted that I marry a real... Well, someone who can cook and have a dozen kids and... Well, let's face it, baby, you can't cook. Who'd want to? <laughs> oh, good morning. Can I help you, sir? Uh, yes, is, um, is Mr. Tierney in, please? Do you have an appointment, sir? Uh, well, uh, no, no, I don't, but uh, oh, he's, uh, he's an old friend of mine. Mr. Tierney may be tied up at the moment. Whom shall I say is calling? Oh. Yes? Mr. Briggs to see you, sir. Who? Mr. Briggs. He said he knew you in the army. I told him you were busy, sir. Oh, just a moment. Briggs? Briggs? Send him away, darling. Briggs? Oh, you wouldn't be the chappy I got the medal for. You've got a medal, Drew. What was it for? It was saving a man's life. <laughs> well, the medal's quite authentic, even if the rescue wasn't. What happened? Well, I was sleeping in a ditch one day when a mosquito bit me on the... Anyway, I accidentally pressed the trigger of the rifle and the damn thing went off, killing a Korean who was just about to bane at this whatever his name is. Well, anyway, the next thing I knew, this fellow was slobbering all over me with gratitude. Well, I suppose I'd better see him. Oh, must you? But, baby, I'm his hero. Well... You can send Mr. Briggs in now. Well, go on, Eunice, the day is young. Mr. Briggs, sir. Oh, uh, you can make that letter in triplicate, Miss Marbles. She has... Oh, hello, Drew. Well, hello. It's nice to see you again, Bob. Uh, Tom. Uh, Tom. <laughs> uh, slip of the lip, yes. Well, sit down, sit down. Oh, thank you, yes. Well, it has been a long time, hasn't it? Yes. <laughs> well, you, uh, you seem to have done pretty well for yourself, Drew. Well, oh, this? Oh, a nice, cushy little job. I sell a thousand cars a year, rent out a couple thousand more. A thousand? you around here, Bob? Uh, Tom. Uh, Tom. Well, actually, I'm, uh, I'm in insurance. And, um, well, seeing you have such a large fleet of cars and jolly old laws being what they are about insurance, I, I thought maybe... I wish I could help you, old boy, but all our insurance is handled by our head office in Toronto. Oh. Really sorry, old boy. But you know how it is. Well, do pop in again if you're ever in the neighbourhood. Always nice to see an old friend. Well, here, take a couple of cigars with you, Briggs. Oh, uh, no, thank you. I, I gave them up when I got married. <laughs> oh, oh, you're married? When was the happy day? Uh, six months, actually. Oh. Any little ones? It uh, wasn't a shotgun wedding. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, would, would, uh, would you like to see a picture of it? Uh, yes. There we are. Very pretty. What's she like? Jenny? Oh, <laughs> very nice. I can have very well with her. <laughs> Oh, you mean, oh, well, she's quiet, home-loving type, you know, everything I want. I'm sure if she's your wife, she must be marvellous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, seeing you again has made me think. Why should head office in Toronto dictate to us who we insure our feet with? 
I mean, we have some fine insurance companies here in London, probably at lower rates. Oh, you, you can't beat our rates, do Look, if I can show you a few figures... Oh, I wouldn't I dream of discussing business in the office with an old friend. Much oh. too formal. Mm. Uh, we ought to get together after hours, you and I, and your wife. Oh, yes, that, that's a marvellous idea. Well, why don't you come round to dinner one night? That sounds a great idea. How yes. about tonight? Oh, well, oh, but that isn't giving you much oh, no, time. Oh, no, no, that's all right. I, I can give Jenny a ring. She'll whip up something in a minute. Uh, say about seven? Seven is fine. Oh, that's smart. Oh, I'd better give you the address. Oh, thanks. There you are, I can't. And after dinner, we can get together and work out something. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, bye-bye, Drew. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I, I really appreciate this. Oh, nonsense. You're an old friend. <laughs> See you at seven. Yes, I look forward to it. Bye. So you can see why, when Tom walked into my office today, just like that, out of a clear blue sky, well, I was overwhelmed. I mean, I don't think I've ever been so glad to see anyone in my whole life. Well, uh, shall we adjourn? Yes, why don't you make yourselves comfortable while I clear the table? Well, uh, let me help you, Jenny. I was always a great one for washing dishes in the army. I don't remember you washing anything in the army. You sit down over there. <laughs> there must be a mountain of dishes out there. You're a wonderful cook, Jenny. Thank you. You ought to meet my uncle. He'd love you. Your uncle? Yes, uh, Charles Whitworth. He owns World Motors. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't know you were related to the owner of the company. Uh, I'm his sister's son. Huh. Actually, I don't see much of him. He's based in Toronto. But he's arriving in London for a visit the day after tomorrow. Come to think of it, I'd like you to meet him. Oh, yes, yes, thanks. <laughs> Actually, I'm throwing a reception for him later at my place the same night. Yes, well, why don't the two of you come? Well, that's awfully nice of you, Drew. Uh, yes, perhaps I could discuss the insurance with him. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Best to go right to the top of these things. <laughs> I'd better put you in the picture first, though. Uh, must I've we got... talk business now, Tom? Uh, but I thought you said at the office. Yes, but I wasn't so pleasantly filled with food then. <laughs> oh, how I envy you, Tom. Me? I'm just an insurance salesman. You're a top executive. Yes, but all I get out of my job is a lot of money. Tough. And money can't buy any of this. A nice, cosy little flat. An even cosier little wife. <laughs> you should see the cosy bills I get. Thank you. It's the domestic bliss I envy. How come you've never married, Drew? I suppose it's really because I'm so shy with women. You? Well, I know it sounds hard to believe, but the only members of the opposite sex I'm ever really comfortable with are either young girls or, or grandmothers. <laughs> <laughs> Gives you a pretty wide range. A uh, pointless range to roam, and a lonely one. To tell the truth, at this very moment, I wish I knew Jenny better. Uh, how, how do you mean? Oh, don't misunderstand me, dear boy. It's just that I have a personal problem where I could badly use a wife. Oh, what sort of a problem? Well, is this reception for my uncle? It's bound to be a bit on the formal side, and, well, I'm not much of a hand at these things. It really needs the feminine touch. Someone to greet the guests, help them mix. Oh, oh you, you mean a hostess. That's it. For a minute, I thought you were... I'd be happy to do it for you. What, you? Oh, no, no, I couldn't ask you. It, It'd be too much of an imposition. Well, you've invited us, so Tom and I are going to be there anyway. Oh, yes, but even though Tom is my oldest friend, I couldn't ask you. We've only just met. Of no. course you could, couldn't he, Tom? Well, I... You see, Tom agrees. You mean you'd be willing to be hostess for me? I'd be delighted. Splendid! <laughs> Well, we had checked all available records, and um, the stock had a real value of 30 shillings a share. But at that time, we were only selling at 24 and 9 pence. So naturally, we plunged right in and bought up every available share there was. Oh, naturally. <laughs> we made a real killing. 94,000 pounds in two days. Not bad. Risky, now. <laughs> I uh, can't interest you in any insurance, can I? Insurance? Yes, I just happen to have a few here. With Look, me. I think I see what somebody I know. Excuse oh, me. Right. What about you, sir? Would you like... Married office. Just make yourselves at home and get yourselves drinks. We're being strictly informal tonight. Right. <laughs> Drew, she's absolutely marvellous. You certainly have got taste. At this time, I think. <laughs> we must get together later, darling, and um, have a heart-to-heart -heart chat. <laughs> oh, yes. Nice people. Accident insurance. What do you suppose I need with accident insurance? Well, you, uh, you might break your neck. <laughs> really? <laughs> Someone else might break it. What do you think of Drew's latest, eh? Gorgeous. I wouldn't mind having a bit like that myself. Just you watch it. 
Look, I see somebody I want to talk to. Hold the fort for a minute, will you, darling? Uh, excuse me. Ah, I finally got you alone. I've been watching you. How are you, Mr. Whitworth? Uncle Charles. Uncle I've been Charles. keeping an eye on you all the evening. I'm extremely pleased with what I've seen. You've got poise, intelligence, and uh, an air of domesticity about you. I'd say you'd be a steady influence on your husband. That's very nice of you to say so, Mr. Whitworth. Oh, you must call me Uncle Charles. Uncle Charles. After all, you're one of the family now. And speaking of families, have you given any thought yet to starting one? Well... I know it's none of my business, really. But you see, he is my only heir. And if anything should happen to him, well, I'm sure you'll understand. That was why I was hoping you'd give Drew a son as quickly as possible. Me? Yes, you. Who else? You and Drew will have to choose your own moment, of course. But in my opinion, the sooner you get on with it, the better. Yes, but I don't think you've got I know what you're going to say. You might produce us a girl the first time. Not that I have any objection to girls, mind you. But if that should happen, then I hope you and Drew will go on trying, if only to please me. Oh, Tom! Drew, I want a word with you. Uh, later, old boy. I'm busy at the moment. Oh, too busy to have a word with the prospective mother of your children? Um, you've been talking to Uncle Charles. Mm -hmm. Jenny was, and they weren't discussing insurance. Now, what the hell's going on? In there. Oh, excuse me, please. Just a little domestic problem that's cropped up. Now look here, Drew. Let's get one thing straight. You may have saved my life once, but there are limits to the gifts you can expect in return. I'm not expecting any gifts. And I want to know why you keep calling me dear and darling in mm. front of your uncle, and why everyone seems to think I'm your wife. Because they really do think you are. They think Jenny's your wife? Well, who the dickens put that idea into their heads? I did. Oh, look, I think I'd better explain. Well, that's the understatement of the year. Yes, well, for years, Uncle Charles has been insisting that I get married and settle down. Being a bachelor himself, well, he knows the sort of mischief that we boys can get up to. Yeah, those were the days. Well, I humoured him along for a bit, but I mean, well, after all, he is my boss. And you know how puritanical some bosses can be. I have some experience. Yes, well, anyway, time went by and he got more insistent. So one day, like a damn fool, I told him I, I really had got married. Well, here I was enjoying all the benefits of marriage with only ten days to find the responsibilities. And you chose me. Why? Well, all my girlfriends are a bit on the flashy side. I thought you told us you were shy with women. Oh, I am, but I'm still attracted by the girlies. That still doesn't explain why you dragged us into this fraud. Well, don't you see? I was desperate. If Uncle Charles turned up and I couldn't produce a wife, I'd have lost my job and well, he'd have disowned me. As it was, you turned up, you were my oldest friend, and you had a wife that suited me. Yeah, well, she suits me too, and I got there first. Yeah, but I was only borrowing Jenny. I'm not a lending library, you know. Oh, there's no use arguing about it. What's done is done. What do you mean, what's done is done? I'm just saying it's happened, and all we can do is make the best of it. How precisely does a man make the best of his wife being borrowed by a friend to pose as his friend's wife? Oh. Well, anyway, it's all completely innocent. Uncle Charles is only here for a few days, and all that time he'll be busy at the office. Well, he thinks I'm married. And once this reception is over, he won't bother about Jenny anymore. You see, darling, if we tell Mr. Whitworth the truth, he'll fire Drew. Like a shot. And you won't get that insurance contract either. We only have to pretend I'm Drew's wife for the rest of this evening. Then it'll all be over. But he's bound to find out eventually. I can always write to him and say that Jenny ran off with a milkman. Milkman? That way we'll all be in the clear. Well... Well, maybe it isn't completely honest, darling, but... Well, Drew didn't hesitate when he had to kill that North Korean who was about to bayonet you. Not for a moment. Well, I suppose I'm being selfish. All right, Drew. You can borrow my wife for the rest of the evening. Thanks, right, old boy. I'll return her in good condition. Well, don't go mad. <laughs> good night. 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 Well, well, well. Thank goodness that's all over and done with. Mm, now we can go home. Home? But this is your home, my dear. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, what Jenny meant was that uh, we can go to bed after we drive you back to your hotel. Oh, you won't have to. I'm staying here tonight. Here? You mean in this flat? All night. And you still here? Yes. Uh, it's late. I'm tired. I'll go to my hotel tomorrow. Oh, but you can't stay here. Why not? Oh, what, what Jenny meant was that uh, we have only one bedroom. Oh, I don't mind sleeping on the sofa. But you can't. That would mean that Drew and Jenny would have to spend the night in the bedroom. Why shouldn't they? They're married. Oh, but the hotel would be so much more comfortable. I said I'm staying here. 
unless there's some reason you don't want me to. Oh, no, 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 of course not. I know. You can have the bedroom, and Drew and I will spend the night in a hotel. That's a great idea. Now, look, let's stop this nonsense once and for all. Either I'm staying, or I shall assume you don't want to have me here. If I'm staying, I'm going to sleep on the sofa. And you two are sleeping in your own bed. Is that clear? Oh, of course, Uncle Charles. Anything you say. Fine, that's settled. I'll go and wash. Where's the bathroom? Uh, through the bedroom. Now, look here, Drew. If you think I'm going to let you spend the night in there with my wife, you must be out of your tiny mind. But I'll be good. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Come on, Jenny, get your coat. We're going. Now, just a minute. Listen to me, old friend. Just for a minute. No. Jenny, get your coat. Look, but if the two of you leave me now, I'm finished. Now, Tom, I appeal to you as an old friend, as the saviour of your life. Just share Jenny with me until the morning. Share Jenny? What do you think I am, an Eskimo? But it'll be completely innocent, I assure you. May I say something? No, you keep out of this. It's nothing to do with now, you. Now, Tom and I can talk this out on a purely man-to-man -man basis, darling, so, so don't worry. Stop calling my wife darling. I only call her darling and wanted to spend the night with me. Uh, share my room with me, mm -hmm. just for the sake of appearances. It's not the appearances I'm worried about, it's the reality. I insist on saying something. Look, will you stop butting in? I'm butting in because I'm the sacrificial goat. Now shut up, both of you. That's better. Now, look, there's a simple solution to all this. Drew, is there any other way into the bathroom other than through your room? No. Fine. Then I'll sleep in the bed. What? And Drew can spend the night in the bath. What? Well, that way we shall all sleep apart like good little boys and girls. Uncle Charles will see us go in there like any happily married couple. Mm -hmm. No. Look, Tom, I promise you, when this whole thing's over, you can insure every car in our fleet. The, the contract will be worth a fortune to you. The contract's not worth that much. Oh, darling. Look, I'm only doing this for your sake. Mm. Don't you trust me? J just this one. Darling, you know I do. Oh, shh, he's coming. That's free now. Yes, well, um, I'd better get you a pillow and some blankets, Uncle Charles. Oh, they're in the... Uh, if the bottom drawer is stuck, just call for help, darling. Jenny? Yes, dear? Hmm? I see we still have one guest left over from the reception. Oh, yes, Mr. Briggs was just going. To bed down, too. It's so late, I may as well stay. Uh, yes, yes. Oh. Yes, Mr. Briggs has some business with us first thing in the morning. Uh, Tom's decided to stay, too, darling. Huh? Oh! How nice. Yes, well, um, I'm afraid you both have to share the host. Uh, well, since everyone seems fixed, I think Jenny and I will... Go to bed. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, here we are. All nice and cosy. Uh -huh. Here I am. I think that's the bathroom. I just wish I had a nightie, but I don't usually bring one to a party. Well, I think we can fix you up with something. I found them when I moved in. The last tenant must have left them behind. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Well, I think they'll all fit any particular colour. White. The symbol of purity. <laughs> yes, of course. are a good little wife, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Hey! Good night, darling. Mm-hmm.
spirited young couple, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> My God, she's fighting for her honor. She doesn't have to fight. She's married. Oh, I know. That's why. Jenny! What the hell are you up? Jenny! Ouch! Jenny! 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 I've had it. Oh, no. Tom. Huh? Mr. Briggs, would you put out the cat, please? The cat? <laughs> Put the cat out. Put the cat out. <laughs> yeah. Nice little pussy. <laughs> I must say, I haven't eaten such a good breakfast in years, my dear. Well, I told you Jenny was a superb cook, Uncle Charles. Well, that's all over. Now, what's all over? Well, I just meant we can all go down to the office. Bye-bye, uh, dear. Bye-bye. Yeah, coming, Tom? Well, Uncle Charles, as I won't be seeing you again. What do you mean you won't be seeing me again? Well, Jenny meant you'll be staying at the hotel. Of course I'll be staying at the hotel. But I plan to have my lunch and my dinner here every day. I can't stand restaurant meals. Uh, but you'll be working at the office. There's an awful lot to do. I haven't been in London for a long time. Do you think I'm going to spend my visit cooped up in an office? No. I like Jenny and I like home cooking. I'm having all my meals here. In the evening, the three of us are going out and raising a little hell. Hey, uh, well, Tom's right. It's getting late. We'd, we'd better be going. But... We'll iron all arrangements out later, dear. Uh, you coming, Tom? Tom? <laughs> Uncle Charles. I'm sure you'll find them all in shipshape order. Yes? Mr. Whitworth's hotel is on the line. They say his car has just been delivered from the airport. Don't leave it outside my hotel. Have them leave it outside his hotel. Well, while you're going over the books and accounts, Uncle Charles, I'll have a quick look round outside to see that everything's operating smoothly. Um. The boys want to see him in the garage. If my uncle leaves the office, warn me. Now, what's the matter? We want to know what's happening. Well, everything's working out perfectly. My uncle thinks I'm nicely domesticated, and the girl is just as he expected. Well, where is he now? In my office, going over the books. Showing him the books? Are you nuts? Oh, don't worry. He can't possibly find out that all the cars on the lot are stolen. I fixed the book so it looks as though we've paid for them. Only he doesn't know that whatever we sell them for is clear profit. Well, it might come as a bit of a shock if he did. He thinks I've gone straight. <laughs> what a jerk. Yeah, when's he going back to Canada? Well, in a few days, I hope. Well, I'm getting restless. I ain't stole a car in days. There'll be no car stealing while he's here. Look, I'm an artist. I've got to keep me hand in or I'll lose the touch. Well, then try pickpocketing for a change. You're very lucky, Miss Auckland. We've got three extra people working on your case now. Uh, it isn't about that. Huh? No, your wife went out and told me to tell you she's left some stew on the stove for you. Oh, thank you very much, Miss Auckland. It's very unusual for your wife to go out when you're due home from work, isn't it? Not really, Miss Auckland. Marvellous, marvellous, my dear. If you go on cooking like this, I'll stay here forever. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm 
sorry I'm late, darling. Mr. Whitworth just stayed and stayed after dinner. Hmm. Well, I'm surprised he didn't want to spend the night there again. Well, he's terribly sweet, really, darling. I'm getting very fond of him. Where are you? Well, Drew says he'll only be here for a week at most. A week? I thought this was supposed to be for only one evening. Oh, darling, all it involves is cooking a few meals for Mr. Whitworth, that's mm. all. Well, it's a small enough thing to do for Drew when you consider that he saved your life. And besides, this could be a very big break for your career. Oh, yes, and that's another thing. When am I going to see Mr. Whitworth about this contract? Drew's been working on him. Oh. And I'll drop in a few hints myself tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? What's happening tomorrow night? Mr. Whitworth's taking us to the theatre. Oh, good. What are we going to see? Um, Drew and me, darling. Oh, come on, darling. I do like your car, Uncle Charles. Can't stand driving strange cars. Besides, after I leave here, I may uh, do Europe. You uh, like your bracelet? Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> but you know, I really shouldn't accept all these from you. I mean, all these lovely clothes and furs and hats. Nonsense. You're my niece, aren't you? The wife of my old ear. Well, you'll have to dress like it. Yes, but I thought you liked that nice, domesticated kind of woman. <laughs> I do, when she's in the kitchen. But when she's in public, well, she must be worthy of well motors. Yes. I just don't know how on earth I'm going to be able to explain all Your that. husband? Yes. Yeah. You don't have to. He knows already. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Oh, well, that's very good of you. <laughs> it's a great comfort to me to realize that despite your meteoric rise to the upper crust, you're still prepared to have a few words with your poor old peasant husband. Oh, now, Tom, you know perfectly well Mr. Whitworth insisted I have these things. Well, what else could I do? Oh, I quite understand the position you're in. <laughs> Any girl in a similar one would have done exactly the same. Especially when her husband can't even afford to buy a, a rubber band for her wrist, let alone a diamond what's it. Yes, well, I don't have time to argue with you. What's the time? Yes, I'm late already. Mr. Whitworth might get suspicious. Mr. Whitworth might... My wife is going out with my friend, and you're worried about whether his uncle will get suspicious. Oh, oh but do go on. Don't you worry about me. I'll just sit here and make love to my bowl of stew. Oh, that reminds me. I've left some on the stove for you. I'll try to be home early, darling. And Tom, no matter how much fun I have tonight, no matter how much I enjoy myself, I'll still be thinking of you. Thank you. Yes, well, good night, dear. Good night. Good night, Miss Auckland. Did you see that? Those clothes. But our husband's only an insurance salesman. I've left some stew for you, darling. And don't forget, when I'm out enjoying myself, I shall be thinking of you. How oh, very sweet. She's not the only one who's too worried. You must have just seen the bill. <laughs> Thank you for a lovely evening, Uncle Charles. And for thinking about my friend at Puritan Insurance. He'll be terribly grateful. I told you I'd think about it. But I didn't bring you both home to talk business. I have something else on my mind. What? About you and Rose starting a family. Now, now I know you think I got a fixation about this. And it's none of my business, but... Uh... Oh, no, Uncle Charles. We understand perfectly. Yes. Starting a family with Jenny has been on my mind for some time now. Now, it's clear to me that if a woman like you doesn't have children and isn't expecting any, then there must be some reason. Well... And the reason can be financial, because I paid you a good salary for managing the London branch. Oh, absolutely first rate. So I can only come to one conclusion. Jenny desperately wants a child, and you don't. Me? But that's not true. I absolutely adore children. Then why haven't you got me? Well, uh, uh, well, I don't see any point in keeping it a secret any longer, do you, darling? Keeping what a secret? Well, we were going to wait a while before making the announcement, but... You mean you... Yes, in 
Six months, I'll be passing out the cigars. My dear, I can't tell you how happy this makes me. I am finally to become a grand uncle. Oh, thank you, my dear. Thank you. <laughs> Don't thank me, Uncle Charles. Thank Drew. I had nothing to do with it. If it's a boy, I'll double your salary. Double? It's a boy. <laughs> I shall sleep peacefully tonight. Oh, I feel wonderful. <laughs> well, I'll leave you together. I'm sure you both have a lot to talk over. As a matter of fact, Uncle Charles, we have. Good night, my dear. Good night, dear. Good night. Bless you both. Good night, my boy. Well done. Now we're alone. Drew Tierney, if you come one step nearer, I'll brain you. I'm just waiting to make sure your uncle's gone and then I'm leaving. But darling, we're about to become parents. <laughs> it happened rather suddenly, didn't it? Well, I became a husband rather suddenly. I want to know why you told your uncle a stupid lie like that. Jenny, don't worry. No one will hear about this. This is between you, myself and Uncle Charles. The secret is safe, believe me. Well... It's her. Oh, it couldn't be. She's married to that one down the hall. Oh, that's what she says. Miss Auckland, what can you mean? Well, don't you ever read the Sunday papers? They're full of situations like this. You think that Mr. and Mrs. Briggs are living in sin? Oh, Miss Garvey. <laughs> Please remember, I'm a lady. But they must be if she's really married to that Tierney man. Right, and therefore she's married to both of them. <gasps> Why, that would make her a Miss Garvey. <laughs> So sorry. Oh, Miss Auckland. Oh. What's she her so up about? What's she doing here, anyway? Well, she just went to see Mr. Barnes. What about? I think she made a terrible fuss in there. Oh, she did? Mm. Well, what's she want to see me about, do you know? I don't know. You better go in quick. Come in! Here we go again. Anything the matter, sir? Anything wrong? Anything the matter? You dare to come and ask me if there's anything in the matter? Oh. How can you look me in the face and ask me if there's anything in the matter? Why, sir? I know where to look. Okay, well, how dare you do that? Get out of here! Get out! Get out! It was a terrible... But Mr. Oh. Barnes, there! Oh. Mr. Barnes! Charming. Oh. For you. talking to Mr. Whitworth about the insurance contract for their cars. Has he now? Yes. Mm. Oh, just imagine the effect when you walk into Puritan Insurance with that contract under your arm. <laughs> Can't you just see your boss's face? I've seen it. Tom, is anything wrong? Oh, no, no, no. Everything's hunky-dory. Absolutely hunky-dory. <laughs> <laughs> but this is just what we've been hoping for. A contract that would knock Mr. Barnsdale's eyes out. Aren't you glad? I'm delirious. But, but just think what this will mean to your career. What career? Tom. You don't mean... Yes, I do mean. I'll be given the boot. Sacked. Fired. Call it what you will. But why? Oh, well, let's see now. Shall we start with Exhibit A or Exhibit B? Exhibit B, I think. 
an eviction notice. Uh-huh. But I still don't understand why. Uh -huh. Let us not forget Exhibit A. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Miss Auckland thought it was such a good likeness of you that she just had to trot along and show it to Mr. Barnsdale for an opinion. And he, of course, had to protect the moral fibre of the company. You mean to say she actually went to your boss with this? Not only that, she took along her palette and brushes as well and she's painted the most vivid picture in scarlet and purple of life at home with the Briggs. Orgies every night between 6 and 8.30, bring your own grapes. But what did you tell him? Well, the truth. That I've lent my wife to my best friend to have a baby with for the greater welfare of the Puritan Insurance Company. And what did he say? He said, uh, Mr. Briggs, we expect an employee to give his all in selling insurance, not his wife's all. Oh, he fired you. Like that. Oh, Tom, it's my fault. But Drew swore it'd be a secret just between us. Yes, well, the whole world knows now. Why didn't you tell him to go to hell? You mean tell Mr Whitworth the truth? Well, we can't. Well, why not? It's all over, isn't it? But it isn't all over. Drew still needs me. Drew needs you? I don't, I suppose. Well, that's not what I meant, and you know it. Mr Whitworth still thinks I'm Drew's wife. Well, then it's about time somebody told him the truth. Will you stop shouting? I am not shouting. Look, you're just peeved because you lost your job and you want everyone else to suffer. You're utterly selfish. Selfish, huh? Who eats the caviar in this family and who eats the stew? Look, you eat stew because that's all we can afford. Oh, that's right. That's all I need. Throw that up in my face. I can't support you in the way Drew can. I suppose that's why you want to continue this nonsense. Maybe you're in love with Drew. That's a terrible thing to say. You know I love you. Well, then I demand you tell Drew where to get off. How dare you order me around? Because he that weareth the pants in the family is king of the castle. Castle. Yes? Yes, yes. Well, he can go jump within the moat. Jenny, for the last time, you're going to do as I tell you. Not till Mr. Whitworth goes back to Canada. Maybe I won't want you back then. All right. That's fine with me. Jenny, come here. Jenny? 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 Not well, back to her other husband, has she? Shut up, you old bag! Oh! <laughs> already seen the books once, Uncle Charles. Why do you want to go over them again? I'm hoping to learn something. What? The secret of your success. The place seems to be prospering. Oh, oh it's nothing, really. Yeah, come in. Uh, yes, what is it, Jeff? Well, excuse me, Mr. Cheney. There's something just come up in the garage. It needs your attention right away. Oh, all right. Uh, excuse me, Uncle Charles. Uh, I shan't be long. is it this time? Phil, Al and me are wondering when we're going to see some action around here again. We're getting tired of sitting around doing nothing. Well, why don't you try servicing some of the regular cars? You're supposed to be mechanics. What, and get grease under my fingernails? I'm an artist. I've got to take care of my hands. Look, the old boy's bound to go back any day now. Well, I hope he does before we get tired of making no dough. Now, look, I've told you over and over again. There'll be no car stealing while he's here, and that's final. I've got to steal a car suit or I'll lose my touch. Evening. Hello, darling. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> are, uh, are you married? I know what it's all about. Uh, Why? Oh, I, I just wonder, that's all. Oh, <laughs> for a moment there, you had me worried. <laughs> I am. You are what? Married. Uh, you've got the look. Mm. Oh, I'm very happily married. <laughs> just that my wife's run out on me, that's all. Oh. oh, well, you don't want to let a little thing like that worry you? <laughs> Shall we have a drink? Oh, thanks. Yes, I'll have a double scotch, if I may. Not with me, you won't. Good night. Oh, oh I'm terribly sorry. I, I forgot myself for the moment. Uh, what would you like? Oh, have the same as you, darling. Double scotch. Oh, that's good. Mm. Good. <laughs> oh, by the way, what's your name? Oh, Liz. Liz. Mm. Uh, well, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun together tonight, Liz. <laughs> Two scotches, please. Doubles. Just 
very crowded. Let's go up to the bar. Why, there's Tom. Who? Tom Briggs. Tom, old boy. Who? What are you doing here? Oh, just came in for a drink. It was Jenny's idea. Oh, hello, darling. May I introduce you yes. to you? No. What do you have, darling? I've changed my mind. I think I'd like to go home. Oh, it's like your idea to come here in the first place. I know, Uncle Charles, but I've suddenly developed the most terrible cold. Oh, in the chest. Have you, darling? Do you mind? Of course oh, darling. not. I'm afraid it'll have to be some other time. Sorry, old boy. Good night. But, Drew, you are the guy that slept outside Jenny and Drew's bedroom the night of the reception? Yes. I thought so. Good night. Was that your wife? Yes. And you slept outside the door while she was in the bedroom with that man? Yes. Mm. No wonder she left you. Good night. Oh, no, no, you don't understand. Let me explain. No one ever listens to me. Quick, into the bedroom. It could be my uncle now. Hurry up. Oh, well, you might at least have said hello. Where's my wife? She's staying at a hotel. Huh. There's a woman in here. Well, thank goodness it isn't Jenny. Okay, well, where is she? She's staying at a hotel, I told you. Well, which hotel? Well, she asked me not to say. She just comes here and cooks meals for me, just like before. Now, are you sure you haven't made a pass at her yet? Well, of course not. Uh. Oh, true, I'm, I'm so miserable. I'm lost without Jenny. Just think of that wonderful insurance contract you're going to get. <laughs> haven't you heard? Of uh, what? Oh. Jenny did say something about you losing your job. Yeah. Homeless, wifeless, jobless. <laughs> what else is there? We can always get you a job. Hmm? Can you drive? Yeah. Uh, have you got a license? Yeah, but... Well, go down to my office first thing in the morning and tell them I said to give you the best car in the place. Just take huh? the car keys and drive away. I'll ring and confirm it with them. But... And then later on in the day, I'll phone you about the job. Oh, Drew, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm, I'm sorry I hit you. <laughs> and Drew... I won't say anything to Jenny about the lady you have in the bedroom. Oh, thanks, old boy. I wouldn't like your wife to think I was being unfaithful to her. Is he gone? Far gone. I've been studying the branches' books. Is anything wrong with them? Oh, not a thing. But it's no secret that Drew was in a lot of trouble before I gave him this job. And it was my idea that he should pull himself together, get married, settle down, and raise a family. Yes. <laughs> now, you're just the good influence he needed. Has he really mended his ways? Well, um, as far as I know, Uncle Charles, Drew hasn't put a foot wrong since he became manager. Excuse me, sir. You wanted a wine list? Uh, thank you. Excuse me. Uncle Charles? Hmm? There's a man trying to open the door of your car. Eh? Yeah? Stop that man! Stop him, I say! Please, get the police! Get the police. Here, where'd you get this? Where do you think? You know what Tierney said? Oh, I couldn't resist it, Phil. Just look at them lines, them vital statistics. I fell in love the minute I laid eyes on her. Yeah, she's a beauty, all right. Just file off her engine numbers and give her a respray. Even her own mother wouldn't know her. What do you say? Do it quick before Tierney comes back. 
Maybe we could flog it on the side, just make a bit of lolly for ourselves, eh? When do we start? Well, I haven't had my dinner yet. First thing when we come back, eh? Is it safe to leave it where it is? You think we got thieves here? To hell with the guy! You want to find the thief, and when you find him, you throw the book at him! We'll do that, sir. Just see what we have, Mr. Briggs. Oh, we don't have much choice, do we? You better take this one because the other is Mr. Tierney's hobby. It says. It's a bit expensive looking, isn't it? <laughs> well, Mr. Tierney said you would have the best one in the place free of charge and this is it, unless you don't like it. Oh, no, no. It's, it's, it's lovely. Well, yes, the keys are in the ignition. You can drive it right off. All right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you're, you're sure it's all right? Oh, yes, perfectly sure. I'll open the garage door for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> What stole the car from outside the restaurant, Sarge? Name? Briggs. Thomas H. Briggs. What does the H stand for? Hyacinth. And I didn't steal that car. I got it legitimately. Sorry. Have you any receipt or any other document from the company? No. Well, they gave it to me for nothing. Lock him up, we'll charge him later. But I'm telling you, they did. I'm innocent. All right, Tony, come and join all the other innocents. Now, look, I know my rights. I want to see my lawyer. You have. Good work. I'll be down to pick up Carlito. They've caught the thief. There's no point in my coming out to identify him. I never saw his face. He saw a man steal so he must be the one. Uh, now you have him, I insist that he's taught a lesson he'll never forget. Thank you, son. Don't you agree with him? Oh, yes, certainly. A scoundrel like that deserves everything he gets. You had to go and steal my uncle's car. But honest boss, I never saw it before. It was just standing there in front of that restaurant looking so lovely and inviting. Oh, and to make matters worse, you had to give it to Briggs of all people. It was the only one in here at the time besides the old croc, and it was you who told me to give him a good car. Oh, this is one heck of a mess. The police say they've caught the man who stole the car, which means they've got Tom. What excuse can we give for the car being here when Briggs arrived? Well, we can't say it was here. If we do, we're admitting we stole it. Yeah, but he's sure to tell the cops he got it here. Well, we'll just have to deny it. Well, that means I've pinned the rap on him. Poor old Tom. Well, he may learn some useful trade while he's in jail. Yeah, but what about his wife? As soon as she knows he's in trouble, she'll give the game away about you and this funny marriage. Well, she can't know that he's the one who's involved yet, so we've still got time. There's a man from the yard here to see. Oh, blimey, the cops! I ain't got my drug license! Come on, mate. You wouldn't like prison grab? I can't tell you how much this upsets me, gentlemen. Then I take it you knew this chap Briggs, huh? Oh, yes, but only casually. I mean, we served in the army together, but... Well, people do change once they put on their civvies again. Why do you think he keeps insisting he got the car here when you say he didn't? Well, the only thing is... The only thing is... What, sir? Well, I suppose he knows I'm the manager of a respectable car firm, and... And he's hoping you'll back him up so that he can worm his way out of a hole. Well, I'd rather not put it that way. After all, we did serve under the same colours. Must keep up the side, you know. Well, quite understand, sir. Look, do you think I could see poor Tom? Maybe I can help him. Well, we're going down to the station, if you'd care to join us. Well, thank you. You're very kind. Hello, old boy. How are they treating you lately? Terrible. Down the old place, sir. They don't want to let me go. Thank heavens you've arrived, anyway. Where's Jenny? Oh, hasn't she been here yet? No. 
Well, I thought I'd told Uncle Charles to... Oh, this is worse than I thought. What's worse? What's happening? Well, I really had hoped that you wouldn't find out this way, that I wouldn't be the one that had to... Had to what? Do listen. I'm, I'm, I'm just about ready for a padded cell. What is this, a, a, a national let's torture Tom Briggs campaign or something? Look, you know I didn't steal that car. Yes, I know that. Then why did you go and tell that dimwitted desk sergeant out there? Charlie, why did you go and tell him, eh? I got that car from your garage with your permission. Well, I'd tell him in a flash, old boy, only... Only what? Well, Uncle Charles insists that they throw the book at you. But why? What's it got to do with him? Can't you guess? No, I can't guess. He knows Jenny. Jenny? You mean he and Jenny? I don't believe it. The old prune imagines he's a plum again. He's had a strange gleam in his eye lately, ever since Jenny's been around. Well, I thought that was a squint. And he's found out I'm her real husband. That's why he wants to get rid of me. So that he can go away with her. While I'm sitting here for the next five years. Oh, two years. Huh? Uh, two years. That's the maximum penalty for a first offender. Oh, really? How do you know? Oh, I just happen to have these facts at my fingertips. Helps the business, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, but to get back to Jenny, I think I'll bring her here and let you have a good heart-to-heart -heart talk with her. No. But even if this thing between her and Uncle Charles is true... I never want to see Jenny again! <laughs> So late. Jenny had a whole dinner. I was visiting a sick friend. Sorry, darling. Come into the bedroom. If you start that again, the I The sick swear... friend I was visiting was Tom. Oh? Oh, well, uh, dinner won't be a minute, Uncle Charles. I, I just have to get through a clean shirt. Well, what's happened to Tom? Tell me. He's in trouble. What sort of trouble? Well, he's the one the police found driving the car. But that's impossible. The car was stolen. I, I didn't see the man's face, but, but I'm sure it wasn't Tom. Well, I realize it doesn't make much sense, and I can't tell how he came into possession of the car, but the fact remains that he was at the wheel when the police caught up with it. And he's in jail. Yes. Oh. Well, I've got to go to him. I can convince the police that he's innocent. Now, wait a minute. You'd better hear the whole story before you rush off. You mean there's more? I've just been to see him. I was lucky to get out of the cell in one piece. He doesn't want to see anyone. Including me? He hasn't gotten over your leaving him yet. He still blames Uncle Charles and myself for the split-up. Mostly Uncle Charles. He thinks my poor dear uncle is trying to... steal you away from him. <laughs> what did I put that insane idea into his head? <sighs> it's amazing the fantasies that a tortured mind can dream up. Well, I'm not going to let him go to prison. Well, he won't have to if you listen to me. Now, in a couple of days, Uncle Charles will be back in Canada. Now, when he's gone, I'll hire the best lawyers and I'll go to court and I'll testify that, well, it's all a misunderstanding and that actually Tom got the car from my garage. You mean you'd actually perjure yourself for him? Well, he's my friend, isn't he? Yes. Yes, well, we'll have to discuss it later. Right now, all I want to do is see Tom. Uh, you won't mention this to Uncle Charles, will you? I mean... Our setup has no relevance to Tom's problem, has it? All right. All right. I've got to go now. Where are you going, my dear? Oh, oh! I have to go down to the grocer's to get some more things for the dinner. I won't be long, dear. I offered to go, but she wouldn't let me. Jenny's like that. She says no husband should have to do anything in the house if he's done a full day's work. Briggs and I like to see my husband. Well, I'm sorry, madam, but your husband's left instructions that you're not to be allowed to visit him. Sergeant, are you married? Yes, ma'am. And how would you like me to phone your wife and tell her you made a pass at me? Hmm? Take the lady down to the cells. Visitors. I thought I told you I didn't want any oh, visitors. Oh, Especially oh, this darling. one. You can take her out. I don't want to Will you take her out? <laughs> Oh, Jenny. Mm. Oh, Tom, I would have come sooner if I knew I'd known. Oh, but you didn't know I was in jail, eh? <laughs> Your decrepit old lover didn't tell you he was trying to hound me to the gallows. My decrepit old lover? Oh, don't you try to deny that Whitworth was trying to get rid of me. I've been brooding about this for hours oh. and enjoying it. Well, why should he try to get rid of because you? Because of his senile desires for you, that's why. Darling, I didn't know 
on earth you're talking about. All I'm trying to do is help you. Yes, the way you helped me by volunteering to become Drew's wife. I didn't volunteer. I, I was requisitioned. Huh. Oh, let's forget about Drew. Oh, yes, that was just a passing fancy. Now at last you found the real thing. A 65-year-old Apollo, Whitworth. Revolting, wrinkled, but sound of wallet. Are you accusing me of having an affair with Mr. Whitworth? That's the usual description, isn't it? How dare you! How dare I? Me, the man with the horns? He's old enough to be my grandfather. Yeah, all your sugar, Daddy. Tom Briggs, you apologise this minute. No, I will not. What's going on? Mind it? your own business. Yes, you keep out of this. Now, you listen to me. I am not having an affair with oh, Mr. Whitworth. Oh, don't worry. I won't stand in his way. I won't fight you. Will you stop talking out of rubbish? I'm trying to get you out of jail. I don't want to get out of jail. Out of my bed, please. It's the only place where I'm safe. Well, I shall just have to get you out to spite yourself. Where are you going? To tell Mr. Whitworth that you're my husband. I don't care if he is going home in two days. I'm going to bring this whole thing out into the open. Why the sudden change of heart? Because I love you, you, you silly-looking man. Jenny, come here. Jenny? Jenny, will you come? Oh! She never listens to me. Never. <laughs> Men. the same question. Did you give you that? No, it was Uncle. His Uncle? Yes, where is Mr. Whitworth or Mr. Tierney? Oh, Drew's at the office. Mr. Whitworth left before I arrived. Yeah, I'll bet. His Uncle. <laughs> In another two days, Uncle Charles will be winging his way back to Canada. Good. Then I can go back to stealing cars legitimately. I gotta hand it to you the way you fixed this Briggs guy. I thought we had it when the cops got him. Oh, it was nothing really, just a few seeds of doubt well sown. You think Briggs will be sprung before the old boy goes home? No, not if I can help it. I think I can stall his wife for another two days. She's not very bright. I don't think it's right to make fun of the dame, boss. If it wasn't for her, the old boy might have snooped around more. Well, actually, I'm rather fond of Jenny. She's a nice girl. It's that jerk of a husband of hers I can't stand. All right, inside. Ah! Take go of me! Oh, Jenny! I found her listening outside. She must have heard everything. I did. Drew Tierney, how dare you call my husband a jerk? Oh, let go of her arm. So all along, you were just using us. Fooling your uncle with me and leading Tom on with all that contract talk. I think you're despicable. I'm a cad, too. Well, how could you? After the way I neglected my husband, cooked your meals and... Even pretended to bear a child for you. Well, my conscience did give me the odd twinge, but I eased it with the thought of the money I'd get when Uncle Charles went the way of all rich uncles. Well, don't think you'll get away with it. He's on to you. That must have been why he was going into Scotland Yard today. My uncle? Yes, that's why I came back. My bus goes past Scotland Yard and I saw him going in there. He's called the cops! Here, let's get out of here. You're right, into the car. She's coming with us. Oh, no, I refuse to get in the car with four men. Don't worry, I'll be with you. Al, open the door. It'll be faster walking. Nonsense! This car took me to Brighton last year with only four stops. were too good, and I have a suspicious mind when I see perfection. <laughs> However, his loss is your gain. How do you mean? I've made you my new branch manager. <laughs> oh, Uncle Charlie, you're a darling.